published 1730 est, the 5th of November 2017 updated 1826 est, the 5th of November 2017 I have really enjoyed in England's rise under a Eddie Jones and I remain convinced they will be contesting the 2019 World Cup final, but I want to raise some genuine concerns as there seem to me to be some cracks developing. It is clear ahead of the November internationals that there are many who feel this run of success will continue unabated through to the World Cup final, but my hunch is there could be some setbacks over the next few months which you need to prepare for. There will be afternoons when it looks like England have taken a step backward rather than forward. Eddie and his team must stay patient, not a quality he or indeed I are known for, and supporters must keep the faith. Eddie Jones is doing a good job but he in England must be prepared for bumps in the road all this hardened in my mind reading reports from the RFU's new CEO Steve Brown just last week proclaiming that the RFU and England were going to make rugby the national sport and replace football that winning World Cups with both S were minimum requirements, along with success in underage events, Olympic sevens and so on. All this, apparently, is virtually guaranteed because of the projected £450 million investment over the coming years. Steve, big mistake why do CEOs in the sporting arena, talented guys in their own field, feel the need to make these tub-thumping statements about a game they have no expertise in and no understanding of what is required it puts pressure on the head coach and team. The RFU management board, especially CEO Francis Barron, were brilliant with me for seven years up to the 2003 World Cup win. Then it all changed as a sense of superiority, even arrogance, drifted into the RFU board based on the fact they clearly felt we had reached the promised land. My worry reading Brown's grandiose statements is that this could be history repeating itself. Just let Eddie Jones make all the announcements pertinent to the England team, nobody else should utter her word. And don't go to war with football, you will never win. Santiago quarter or comfortable in the back three or in the centre, the 23-year-old has scored 12 tries in his 33 caps, with three of those scores coming at the 2015 World Cup. Pablo Matera made his debut as a teenager in 2013 and is a real powerhouse that England will have to deal with if they want to win the battle up front. Agustin Crevi Argentina's captain is a dynamic hooker, who is unafraid to run with the ball and possesses an impressive offload game. Always a nuisance in the loose, football is not the enemy. The enemy is the All Blacks, Springboks and Wallabies football is not there to be toppled or bettered, envied or criticised. What rugby must always do is find the very best way of coexisting, forging its own player bases and finding its own commercial model that takes into account football's inevitable preeminence. And now some purely rugby concerns Rako Ione is only 20 and already has nine test tries, Damian McKenzie is blazing a trail at back. Australian flankers Jack Dempsey and Ned Hannigan appear to be the real deal. For the box, their new hooker Malcolm Marks looks a world-beater. England have lots of quality players, but only two possibly world-class performers, Mara Itoya and Owen Farrell, with Anthony Watson a contender if he gets more opportunities. We need to double that number, and quickly. England have lots of excellent players, but only two are possibly world-class. Maro Otoyo is only to become the best team in the world. You must take no shortcuts with selection. I really do not buy into the term finishes. In fact, I think it can set the wrong tone and attitude. Every player wants a shirt numbered 115. They should be gutted if not in the starting team and even more cranky if taken off for anything other than injuries. England need to be blooding Owen Farrell as captain. Install him now as he will need time to bed and so he is prepared for the Six Nations, as I am expecting a massive challenge from France, Ireland and Wales in a championship when England play three of their first four games away. Owen Farrell is England's other star man, and Jones needs to be blooding him as his captain England are talking far too much about the All Blacks, as if they are the only team they need to beat. South Africa's and Australia's stock is rising and all the Six Nations teams with the exception of Italy are more than capable of beating this England team. Let's not forget we lost to Wales and Australia at the last World Cup. Let's stop obsessing over the All Blacks until we actually face them until the Ireland Grand Slam game. England had created a real mystique but the lame manner of defeat in Dublin blew that away and the Lions tour continued that process. Opponents now know that Itoya and Farrell are only flesh and blood and they might have spotted one or two small weaknesses in their games. I've long argued that Lions tours rarely help England because they throw up yet more selectorial problems and it's difficult enough making the right calls. 
Elliot Daly went well on the wing in New Zealand but is that where England really want to play him? Jamie George was superb in the tests. Is he now better than Dylan Hartley? Ben Teo saw his stock rise but do England see him as a starter? Kyle Sinclair was impressive off the bench but does that mean he would have been ready to start for England if he hadn't been banned for gouging Quinn's colleague Joe Marler was outstanding in the last six nations and seemed to have sorted out his disciplinary issues but lost out to the returning Mac of Uni Piola on the Lions trip. He has since found himself involved in a couple of incidents and is unavailable against Argentina with a ban. Farrell can play against Argentina, but fellow Lions ace Mac of Uni Polarite is banned fitness, fitness, fitness. I've been banging this drum for a while. England's conditioning scares nobody. Half the pack really struggle to play A80 if required and for me that means they should NT be picked. I am very encouraged Eddie seems to recognise this. To summarise, a reality check is needed. England under Eddie have a magnificent record and their 30 series win in Australia in 2016 was, in my opinion, one of England's finest ever achievements, but for me that record is a little deceptive. Although England have been excellent in finding ways to win, they rarely bury the opposition as great teams do. And the last time they were at strength, that day in Dublin, they came second by a distance. There is still huge room for improvement and, encouragingly, I believe everybody in the England camp acknowledges that.